Well, there's probably nothing more frustrating as a hunter than dealing with a buck that you're consistently getting pictures of at 12, 1, 2 in the morning. So I wanted to take some time today and talk about five reasons why you might be dealing with a nocturnal buck on your property. The number one reason why your buck may be nocturnal is because you don't have the security cover on your land that he needs in order to feel safe on your property. If you're consistently getting pictures at 12, 1, 2 in the morning, that means that buck is traveling to get to your property. And what that also means is that he is bedding somewhere else. I travel to far too many properties where they have open park-like woods and they do not have the cover that is required to hold a mature buck. But the nice thing is is that this problem is fixable. You can create phenomenal security cover through busting out a chainsaw and getting that canopy opened up through old field management by killing off your cool season grass and releasing that seed bed so that the woody species will thrive, by tree planting, adding conifers so that you have that thermal cover component that is so crucial during the late hunting season and through the winter. And if you're in big egg country, you can even utilize switchgrass for cover. Now switchgrass is probably my least favorite form of cover for white-tailed deer, but in big open egg country where there is not much other cover around switchgrass can hold white-tailed deer at the end of the day having a variety of bedding options on your farm is going to be the best plan of attack the second reason why your buck may be nocturnal is because you are over hunting your food sources i see this all the time when guys plant immaculate food plots and they put all that time and energy into those food plots, they feel the need to hunt directly over them. But what happens is we start to burn out those food plots. The deer start to respond to that hunting pressure and they start to come out later and later, eventually coming out right after dark. Instead of hunting directly over our food plots, it's better to back off those plots and start to hunt those staging areas that occur between bedding and food. These areas often set up for a much better entrance and exit so that we aren't bumping deer getting into stand and especially when we're exiting the stand. Also, if you're hunting a high pressure state, mature bucks just don't tend to daylight into food sources. It's occurred more than once where I've been hunting these staging areas and I've watched a mature buck get up out of the security cover and sit and watch that food source for up to an hour before they decide to start transitioning towards that food plot right at last light. Sitting in these transition areas can be an excellent spot to intercept a buck as he's waiting to head towards that food source. If you do decide to hunt a food plot, Make sure you're thinking about how you are going to be able to exit that plot when you need to leave at the end of the evening. Because if you're bumping deer off that food source when you're getting out of stands, you will burn out that food plot for future hunts. This leads into the third point I'd like to make. If you have a poor entrance and exit strategy into your deer stands, that can definitely shut down the daylight buck activity on your property. Here are the guidelines I tend to use for entering and exiting my morning and evening stands. In the mornings I tend to enter away from food and then exit my morning stands through food. So in theory the deer should be out on those destination food sources when it's still dark out. So if you enter away from food you shouldn't risk bumping deer. Of course, as the morning wears on, the deer will eventually head back into their bedding, so if you exit through food, you should have a safe exit from your morning stand. In the evening, I take the opposite approach. I will enter my stands closer to the food sources, and then I will exit away from the food sources. 
as we enter our evening stand locations, the deer should still be back in their bedding areas. So if we enter closer to those food sources, we shouldn't risk bumping deer. And as we exit, we want to try to have an exit strategy that can take us away from those food sources because the time we get off stand in the evening, the deer should be out on those food sources. Also, always be aware of where your scent is blowing when you're entering and exiting your stand. If your scent is blowing towards where the deer can be, you can also risk bumping those deer. The fourth reason why your buck could be nocturnal is because you've chosen a poor location to put your food source. For example, if you have a smaller property and you've chosen to put your food plot in the dead center of your property, you've created a very tough situation to actually bed deer on your property. When we have a smaller property and we put the food in the middle, we just don't leave a whole lot of space for deer to be able to actually bed on the property because there is not much depth to the property anymore. You've also created a potentially tough situation for you to be able to access your deer stands. Now, if you have a larger property, you can have food sources in the middle of the property because there is more space to stack cover in other areas of the property. But you always need to be thinking about how your access sets up with where you are placing these food plots. If you are needing to access through these food sources at the wrong times, you can really mess up your property. Even bumping does off of food sources creates a chain reaction back in the timber where a buck that might have been just hanging back in the timber gets spooked because of that doe that's spooking off the plot. And number five, the final reason why I think you may have a nocturnal buck is because you have poor screening. We add screening to properties for various reasons, but the ultimate reason for adding screening is that it creates security on the property. Screening allows us to be screened from the deer, as well as screen the deer from each other, lowering social stress within the herd. If you can walk back in your timber 50 yards and look out and see the food sources clear as day, you do not have adequate screening on your property. Now there are many different ways that you can add screening to your property to increase the overall security level of your property. The top three ways that I add screening on our farm is through switchgrass plantings, through spruce tree plantings, and through edge feathering. As far as what I'm screening, I'm screening everything. I'm screening access, I'm screening food plots, and I'm screening bedding areas. I want deer to feel secure on every square inch of our farm. At the end of the day, if you're willing to roll up your sleeves and start to get to work, you can see a true transformation on your property. Through intentional planning and lots of sweat equity, we have seen our farm go from a nocturnal property to one that holds mature bucks and one that we've experienced consistent success on year after year. You all take care. God bless.